please join me in reading Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. He makes me lie down in green pastures and leads me beside still waters. He revives my soul and guides me along right pathways for his name's sake. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You spread a table before me in the presence of those who trouble me. You have anointed my head with oil, and my cup is running over. Surely your goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. A reading from the Gospel of John. Jesus said, Very truly I tell you, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate, but climbs in by any other way, is a thief and a bandit. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by his name and leads them out. When he has brought all his own, he goes ahead of them, and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger, but they will run from him because they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus used this figure of speech with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So Jesus said to them again, Very truly, I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and bandits, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. The word of the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. My husband Al and I love to watch nature specials. We find them fascinating and weird, and we love seeing how animals are so human, or maybe really seeing that humans are so much more like animals. And sometimes there are these heartbreaking stories. There's often some instance where a young animal missing its mother faces danger on its own. And there's the tension of what's going to happen. When will the mother return? Will it escape? And then in the nick of time, the mother appears on the horizon, and he is safe for another day. In those stories, there's almost always a shot of some tiny, vulnerable little creature sitting amid a crowd, crying out for its mother. And inevitably, the mother hears the voice of her own young amid the tumult, and they reunite. Phew, baby's protector is there once again. And that got me really thinking about the power of voice, which we hear talked about today in the Gospel. During the COVID-19 pandemic, we are learning about the impact of voice and the comfort of familiar voices. For those of us living alone, we may long for the sound of friendly voices we know and love. And for those living with others, we may be sick of hearing the same voices. In fact, a recent New York Times article reported that while internet traffic is up by about 20 to 25 percent since the pandemic began, Verizon is handling an average of more than 800 million calls per day during the week alone which is more than double the volume on an average Mother's Day. And those calls are lasting longer. Clearly, we want to connect with one another by voice. For those who are alone or scared in the hospital at this time, unable to connect with their loved ones, phone calls are a lifeline to their family. In times of crisis, we crave the voices of those we love. And studies show that even unconscious patients can be affected by the sound of a familiar voice. In times of sadness, we want to be comforted by voices we know and love. They can give us hope for the future and reassure us of better times to come. And when we're celebrating, we revel in those familiar voices who share jokes and joys and memories. For example, in my own family, when my sister or brother or I hear Gloria Gaynor's I Will Survive, we are compelled to sing out loud together. I don't know. It's a long story. I can tell you later. In scripture today, 
Jesus uses the image of the shepherd and the sheep and the sheepfold. So it's worth thinking about what that means. So let's recap. In Jesus' Jesus's time, sheep would often be grazing for days at a time. So the sheepfold is a pen with stone walls that are about four feet high and a gate. And this is used to keep them safe at night. In the wilderness, the sheepfold could actually mean the difference between life and death, protecting against predators, both human and animal. The gate is the only access. It is protected by the shepherds. It's where the shepherd would camp at night. It's where they would build their fire. It's where they would sleep in order to defend the animals inside the pen. And while there was often just a single shepherd for a flock, there could be two or three flocks using the same pen at the same time. So in the morning, the shepherd would get up, call for its flock. The sheep would recognize that shepherd's voice and would follow them. And we know the image of Jesus as a shepherd. It's alluded to in John today. By the way, right after this passage, it's the, the story that starts, I am the good shepherd. So that's Jesus. It also is in Psalm 23 that we hear today. And it's worth noting that that psalm is actually attributed to David, who was himself, by the way, a shepherd before he became a king. In today's gospel, Jesus talks about not just the shepherd, not just the, the shepherd, the voice of the shepherd and that he is a shepherd, but also the gate of the sheepfold. He says he is the gate. By the way, I have to say, I love this passage. In the first part, we get this kind of standard kind of parable about Jesus trying to explain to the disciples who and what he is. But as we hear, they did not understand what he was saying to them. So Jesus then dumbs it down, and I can just imagine him looking at their blank faces, realizing they are not getting this, and his saying, I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and bandits, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved. So back to the sheepfold. So let's consider what the gate does at the sheepfold. It defines the way in. It determines who and what comes in and goes out. That's how the sheep go in. That's how the shepherd goes in. That's how they all come back out again. And it is protected and defended by the shepherd. So here we have Jesus giving this multifaceted image of who he is for us, both gate and shepherd. Jesus goes ahead of us, guiding with care out of this abundant love. Jesus also protects those who follow him. He stands guard and watches over all in his care, like a shepherd would. And Jesus shows us the way home. He says, whoever enters by me will be saved and will have abundant life. So this message that Jesus is both shepherd and way is also, as I said, in the psalm that we read today. And like a familiar voice, I have to say, I find these words so comforting and hopeful and reassuring, which is exactly what we need in times like those we find ourselves in right now. So going through this day, this week, consider the words of that song. In fact, let's say them together. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. I wish you peace today, tomorrow, and always. Amen. I ask your prayers for God's people throughout the world for the people of Grace Church, together in spirit, and for all ministers and people. Pray for the church. I ask for your prayers for peace, for goodwill among nations, for the well-being of all people. Pray for justice and peace. I ask for your prayers for those suffering from the coronavirus. 
either through illness, loneliness, unemployment, or anxiety. May this pandemic depart from the face of the earth, and may those who suffer in its wake be healed. Pray for deliverance. I ask your prayers for Kristen and Sean, Ricky and Patty Burks, Chris Yabe, Maria Diamante, Bob Scanlon, Robert Kramer, Bob Nelson, Kenneth Scanlon, Jerry Clifford, all those caring for the sick, those seeking treatments and vaccines for the virus, and all those whose work places them in harm's way. Pray for those who suffer from any grief or trouble. I ask your prayers for the departed. Pray for those who have died. We pray all this in the words of our Savior Jesus Christ, taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is a kingdom and a power and a glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you and give you his peace. The blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen.